Hello everyone. Welcome to Study IQ English, your favorite UPSC platform. In this video, let's talk about one symbol of India's unique natural beauty, and we are referring to none other than the Pangong So Lake. The lake that is nestled in the beautiful Himalayan range is also a matter of territorial dispute between India and China right since 1962 onwards. The lake is geographically situated in such a manner that while India has control over one third of its area, the two third area lies with China, because in the Himalayan belt, it is the area of Leh Ladakh, which comes under Indian control. Whereas it is the area of Tibetan Autonomous Region under China's control that also is a major part where this lake is situated. So it is known not only for being a very strategic, important choke point, but at the same time also because it has massive touristic potential. Thousands of tourists they gather to take one glimpse of this unique color-changing lake. Now, definitely, India has other color-changing lakes too. For example, we have the Lonar Lake in Maharashtra. that is often associated with the red algae phenomena and a unique distinct color of the lake water but talking about the pangong so right now let's quickly see some important upsc related facts about the pangong lake now have you ever wondered why the name pangong so because it has been derived from a tibetan word called the high grassland lake now this lake is a narrow a thin stretch which is referred to as an Andorik Lake. Why is it called Andorik? Because it is completely landlocked. It has no drainage whatsoever in a river or the sea, and hence it has massive salt and mineral content. Now, this lake is situated at quite a high altitude of about fourteen thousand feet. That comes out about four three five zero meters in the Ladakh Himalaya, and it is world's highest salt water lake. Very important fact. Now India holds one third of this, whereas China claims two third of this. So for India, it is about the ownership of one thirty-five kilometers long, boomerang-shaped lake. So out of this entire territory, India could claim one third. The border dispute is still going on. There is no actual finalization of the right line of control between India and China since the nineteen sixty-two war. Despite negotiations, repeated talks. There has been no final verdict yet, and at the same time, this Pangong So Lake, which is claimed by both the countries in different proportions, continues to attract and shock the tourists with its lovely blue, green, red, different tinges of colors throughout different times of the day and different months. Now, why is lake so strategically important? One reason, of course, is because it is situated in the Chusul approach. a very important route for chinese military activities and apart from that the lake is also near an area that is on the lac the line of actual control and since it passes from there it often witnesses crossing of paths by both indian military as well as chinese military the north bank of the lake is divided into eight jetting out finger like structures now let's remember that Pangong fingers is the name that we give to these structures. They are about eight prominent mountain-like evictions that are protruding out of this lake from the Chang Chenmo range into the Pangong Lake itself. So it looks like four about high eight spikes that are coming out of the northern part of the lake. And here is the controversy also because as India claims that Indian control extends up to finger 8 of this lake it is china which says that no this is a disputed claim because till finger 4 it is chinese territory back in 2024 china once again shocked india by creating and operationalizing functioning a bridge that connected the north and south banks of the pangong so lake in the eastern ladakh area now india saw this as a major intrusion into indian territory okay and with completing this bridge by functionalizing this bridge the chinese people's liberation army chinese military was able to reduce the time needed to move its troops and its tankers so therefore the conflict has been going on now the bigger question is why does this lake experience such a lovely change of color every now and then one thing is that it is a high altitude lake it's a salt water lake the water is 
completely salty and rich in mineral. With this high mineral content, the dissolved salts in the lake, the specific nature of water molecules contribute to the water color change. Because as it interacts with light, there is a different phenomena of interaction that takes place between water molecules and the light. It's a heavy water, completely mixed with mineral and salt, a dense water. Now, the changing angle of the sun's rays also interacts with the water surface and the molecules create different colors at different times of the day, right from the early morning to the midday and until the evening time. Wind also has a major role to play. Now, this area experiences quite a, on an average, quite a fast speed of wind. So, therefore, when wind affects the surface of the water, that also creates a potential change in reflection and contributes to drifting colors all the day. The water can therefore appear blue, green, emerald, sometimes even greyish. In some instances, the water also becomes golden, red or pink. So it means it has a beautiful sight and hence it is super attractive to all the tourists. Now, as we mentioned, this is an indo lake. But what do you mean by an indo lake? Now, a lake that has no opening, it has no outlet to either a river or to the sea, is known as an indo lake, since it's a closed one. You might have seen examples in the world map for the Caspian Sea or for the Great Salt Lake in America. Now, it is often such lakes, although they may be very small in its size or they may be huge, but at the end of the distance, they have no outlet. The minerals and the salt level keeps on accumulating over a period of time, making such enduric lakes highly saline in nature. They are very, very saline. Now, instead of the water therefore flowing out, the only way the water actually is exchanged in the water cycle is through evaporation. Or sometimes it seeps into the ground itself. Apart from that, there is no other known outlet. Now, as I said, the examples could be the Caspian Sea itself. And with its high salt content, it is continuing to surprise the scientists that in the winter season, the lake gets completely frozen. Again, that's a unique phenomenon. With such a high salt content, we experience a total freezing of the sea in the peak winter months. So all in all, whether it's Pangong, whether it's Lonar, again, a beautiful reminder of how India has huge touristic potential from north to south. And owing to different geographical phenomena, these areas continue to attract tourists the world over. They need protection, preservation and revitalization throughout, being symbols of India's proud heritage. And now to the question. With reference to the Pangong So Lake, or the Pangong Lake as you call it, consider the following statements. One, Pangong Lake is an endorheic lake. An endorheic lake, as I said, a lake that does not drain out. No outlet lake. It's located partly in India and partly in China. Two, the lake freezes completely in winter despite being extremely saline. And three, Pangong Lake lies entirely within Indian Union territory of Ladakh. Easy question there. You can pick out the valid answer by choosing the appropriate codes below. And I have attached the answer for your reference too. And as I take your leave for this video, there is a reminder about the ongoing mega sale. So if you want to make your UPST journey easier, more fruitful, now is the right time. The sale ends tomorrow, 12th September, 11 p.m. sharp. So you can use the code SPLIVE on your screen and then take up any course, whether it's UPSC, State PSC, Judiciary or an optional course. So make your preparation more systematic and professional with us. Enroll for the sale today. And do like, share and subscribe. Study IQ English if you enjoy such knowledge tidbits. Thank you.